Was Michael Mayer's week six breakout for real? We're talking about that and more on today's episode of Locked On Dynasty. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Matt Williamson and Ryan McDowell. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Today's a crossover Thursday, and this crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. I'm your host, Ryan McDowell. You can follow me on Twitter at RyanMC23. Joining me, as always, is former NFL scout Matt Williamson. Find Matt on Twitter at WilliamsonNFL. Matt, it is Thursday. We're talking rookies today. And, you know, rookies have been a big part of the conversation this year, as they always are. Uh, sure. Devon A-Chain, Anthony Richardson, Puka Nakua. Uh, certainly Bijan Robinson. Sometimes I feel like we overlook him. We take him for granted a little bit, but um, yeah, uh, lots of rookie breakouts that have been fun to track this year. I'm thinking we might not be done with the rookie breakouts yet though. We've Ooh. gotten, we've gotten some hints from a few players, a handful of players. And I want to talk about those guys today. We've seen just enough, you know, we've seen a tease. We've got a taste of, uh, what these players can really do on an NFL field. Um, and, and I really just want to get your thoughts to see if there's more to come or if that tease is really all they are. We've got to start, Matt, with Michael Mayer, the uh, rookie tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. Of course, a very highly regarded uh, entering kind of the rookie draft season. And as that rookie draft season went along, he – uh, started to lose stock a little bit. Some of the other uh, players, namely Dalton Kincaid, overtook him. And uh, by the time the NFL draft uh, came around, came and went, and rookie drafts started, Michael Mayer was more like the tight end three or four, and and really continued to lose value once the season started. We saw almost nothing from him the first five weeks of the year. And then in week six, the uh, Raiders decided to use their day two pick. Uh, finally, uh, five catches for 75 yards. And, you know, that's that may not sound like a huge game, but we yeah, yeah. really, really hadn't played at all. That feels really good. And that was good for the tight end five spot for the week. Uh, Matt, I know you had some concerns about Michael Mayer and uh, certainly for several weeks. Looked like you were spot on on that one. So with what we saw in week six, is that a tease or is that the beginning of a breakout from the rookie tight end? No, I'm taking back some of my pre-draft analysis on him. I mean, my okay. big worries were not a dynamic athlete, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of feel to playing tight end, sitting down in zones. You see some of the great ones just last for so many years because their knowledge of the game. And, you know, getting past Austin Hooper is just a small hurdle. And the Raiders yeah. were just so concentrated with where they put the football that I don't think it's a coincidence that Devontae Adams is sort of complaining, hey, I'm not getting the ball enough. Well, mm -hmm. you're the reason Mayer and Meyer and all these other guys are starting to really, you know, uh, Myers or is, is, you know, starting to really thrive. And I think that's working out well. I don't love their quarterback situation, but sure. I'm I'm in on Mayer. I, I think he's going to be a quality guy, and this is probably an offseason topic. But I'm really open to the to the idea that rookie tight ends might contribute now. You know, go ask Sam Laporta. You know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mayer, uh, I talked about him losing value. Still, the tight end seventeen in October DLF hmm. Dynasty ADP. So he's fallen, but he hasn't fallen that far. Um, and, and if we see, you know, if we see this play from week six continue, we could be talking about Michael Mayer very quickly as a low end tight end one. You look at the guys ahead of him, Chig yeah. Okonkwo, Darren Waller, David Njoku, Cole Komet, Jake Ferguson. Uh, 
you know, it's not that daunting. It, right. It's not that daunting. Exactly. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you kind of come around a little bit on Michael Mayer. He's, he's a Kentucky boy. Um, so, oh, I didn't uh, know that. yeah, Northern Kentucky, you know, basic, basically Cincinnati area. And, and obviously, uh, ended up at Notre Dame, which is, uh, you know, some consider tight end you. So we'll see if he can continue that play. You mentioned Devonte Adams starting to be some trade whispers and rumors with him. And, and certainly if, uh, I mean, it feels like a long shot still, obviously, but if the Raiders were to move Devonte Adams, we're talking about Michael Mayer moving up a peg in the, the target yeah. list. And uh, that would obviously be a very good thing for him a player that I'm really excited about. And you talk about hints. We've seen just enough to keep us interested and maybe even get this guy in your fantasy lineups as your wide receiver three or as a flex, especially now that the buys are really hitting Josh downs of the Indianapolis Colts does have three games this year as the wide receiver 31 or better wide receiver. 18 was his best performance. I think it's, I think it's fair to say he's clearly overtaken Alec Pierce as the wide receiver two in that offense. And, uh, you know, they, they throw to seven different tight ends. And, <laughs> I mean, they haven't really used their running backs too much in the passing game. So when you talk about Downs as the wide receiver two, he could legitimately be the second option behind Michael Pittman in that offense. Of course, we got the news earlier this week that, uh, quarterback Anthony Richardson is done for the year, uh, which does not help Downs or Pittman or any other member of that Colts offense. What are your thoughts on what you've seen from Downs so far in these first six games and what you expect moving forward? I'm a big fan. I was a big fan yeah. coming out. I mean, I think – get this out of the way. I mean, I think there's a misnomer just because he's shorter, smaller, and does most of his work out of a slot – that he's a slot only. He's a welker. I mean, that that's all he can do. Just a short area quickness guy. I don't see it that way at all. I mean, I think he is a much more well-rounded downfield route, speed. I mean, all those type of things. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. You mentioned that Richardson being out doesn't help. I, I don't know. I mean, Richardson isn't very accurate. Minshew is more okay. suited for slot stuff. But I also think Minshew has and will continue to get exposed as a starter the more he plays. You know, he's much better as a relief pitcher than, you know, mm -hmm. a starter all season long. So, um, but all in all, I mean, I think we're happy with the quarterback situation, the, situ the situation as a whole, who he's fighting for for targets. I think he's a real good player. Yeah, I'm in. Josh Downs is the wide receiver 53 in October DLF Dynasty ADP. Some other wideouts being valued around him. DeAndre Hopkins, Cortland Sutton, a couple of surprising names. They certainly have uh, lost some value. Tutu Atwell, Wandell Robinson, a couple of younger players who are moving up, as is Josh Downs. So currently just outside of that uh, top 50 wide receiver group, could definitely see him continue to gain some value. Matt, we have some other rookies who have flashed a little bit, at least through these first six weeks, and we will continue this conversation and find out which rookies are just on that verge of a breakout performance. We'll do that next. So true story. I'm real big on workout shorts, basketball shorts, and which is fine around the house. But as my kids have become teenagers, dad, that ain't going to cut it when we go to breakfast or go to the in-laws or grandparents or go out in any way. You need to start presenting yourself a little better. And so that correlated with our relationship in the Locked On Network with Bird Dogs. And it's worked out great. Uh, Peacock and I talk about him all the time. He wears them golfing. I wear them out, like I just said. And bird dogs are a stretch khaki short that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg and give you a truly sculpted look. And my wife mentions it all the time. She's like, yeah, they look great on you. Uh, bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit much, much better. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of that stiff, restricted cotton. These are way different. Bird dogs fixes the issue 
by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses an anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. And they're really good for all occasions. Like I said, you know, Peacock wears them golfing. I wear them out. You can wear them around the pool. When you work in the yard with them, you can work out with them. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL and, and, or enter the promo code locked on NFL at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. I mean, that's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free water ba- bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. I promise you. Football season is here and Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On NFL Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live at 2 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Host Tanitra Batiste, Jarvis Davis, and Kyle Krabs will break down every game on the NFL slate to get you ready for your team's matchup your fantasy lineups, your betting angles, and more. Plus, get the in-depth local analysis from our stable of NFL hosts across the country who know these teams better than anyone else. Find Locked On NFL Kickoff Live every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern on any Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Matt, we're talking about rookies who could be on the verge of a breakout. The next one I want to talk about or ask you about is another receiver. This one from Arizona. We're talking about Michael Wilson. Had that huge game back in week four. He was the wide receiver six on the week. Saw seven targets. Caught all seven of them for 76 yards and two touchdowns. Looked like that could be the beginning of something. And then the past couple weeks have been quiet. He's actually been the wide receiver 41 or lower in the other five games that he's played. But honestly, I think it's noteworthy that, that Wilson is even playing. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're seeing him consistently in the lineup as far as running routes, seeing targets, uh, Rondell Moore. I think Arizona is still kind of trying to figure out what he is exactly, but Wilson's the wide receiver too on this team behind Hollywood Brown. What are your thoughts on Wilson moving forward? Yeah, and he's a guy I liked at draft. I own him in a lot of my dynasty leagues. Thought he was going way too late. Um, I thought he went later in the NFL draft than I had expected. I mean, he has size. He has physicality. He's a smart dude from Stanford. He'll play special teams. I always put you know put a lot of stock in that with you know special teamers that have already done that before they come in the league. Means they're willing to do the little things to succeed in the sport. And I think he's showing that. Um, I think there's a chance Marquise Brown doesn't last with the cards. He could get out of the equation, but could Marvin Harrison Jr. end up there next year? Maybe, you know, I mean, there's certainly more shoes to drop going forward at that wide receiver position, but he is the best thing you said, I thought was he is seeing the field already and, you know, Mm -hmm. has already gained trust. So he's ahead of the curve. I don't know that he'll be super fantasy relevant. I mean, he may be a wide receiver three for, his career in a KJ Osborne fashion, but uh, I'd rather own him than not. I was actually surprised checking out that October ADP. He's getting quite a bit of value. Is he <clears throat> wide receiver 50 um, ahead of the, one of the guys we already talked about Josh Downs also ahead of Deandre Hopkins, Cortland Sutton, a couple of those veterans I mentioned and right behind Rashi rice. Uh, we're not going to talk about rice today. I think he's a, uh, he's already shown us enough that he doesn't necessarily belong in this conversation, but yeah, again, so. su- surprised to see Wilson at wide receiver 50. I could actually see him losing a little bit of value as some of these other guys uh, rise up. Wilson is already 23 years old, not obviously not super old, but a little bit older for an incoming rookie. So I said all good stuff about him, but that seems overvalued to me. Uh, like I would much rather have downs. Wouldn't you? Absolutely. And even, yeah, yeah. you know, we're not, we don't want to just name a bunch of names here, but some of the players uh, further down the list below Wilson, I already mentioned that name Tutu Atwell, at well, Wondell Robinson. I want both of those guys over Michael Wilson, Rashid yeah. Shahid, another rookie, Jonathan yeah. Mingo. We haven't seen much from him, but I'm not ready to give up on chances. him yet. Yeah. 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 Um, and then if you're looking for veterans, Michael Thomas, uh, Adam Thielen, the wide receiver three on the season, uh, <laughs> I would, 
certainly if you're a contender, you you definitely want Thielen uh, over a, a guy like Michael Wilson, even even though he's just a rookie. So maybe no matter yeah, what, Wilson at right, Wilson at yeah. wide receiver fifty does seem uh, very overvalued. Over. Matt, let's talk about another wide receiver, Marvin Mims. This guy's kind of become uh, the poster boy for fantasy Twitter. Uh, lots of people frustrated that we're not seeing more playing time for Marvin Mims there in Denver. Uh, he's seen, going back to that word tease, this this guy is it. He, is, he has teased us with some huge performances, uh, some huge catches, including a, a long touchdown. Uh, a few weeks ago, and just looking at at the Denver wide receivers, he's fourth in targets, uh, so he's obviously behind Sutton and Judy. I believe also behind um, Brandon Johnson. He's third in receptions. He's second in receiving yards, but he's only two fantasy points behind Jerry Judy, even though Judy has seventeen more targets. So. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the, the efficiency numbers are crazy here. Marvin Mims, it looks like he might be the best wide receiver on the Broncos roster, but he just can't get on the field consistently. Judy's another guy we've heard trade rumors about. And obviously, as we said with Adams, if, if Judy were to get dealt, you would think that would open some playing time for Marvin Mims. I'm starting to wonder what's going on with Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos. Yeah, they're a disaster, and I'm actually shocked there hasn't been more trades, more changes, dumping of guys already, and maybe that's coming any minute. Maybe when people will hear this, it'll be already a part of the situation. I think they want to clean house completely. I think they want to pick the first overall. I mean, I, I think it's going to be full tank mode for this team. But that opens the door for Mims, if I'm right. And we have a lot of time before the trade deadline. We still have, you know, well over a week. But he was Sean Payton's first pick. He was, he's a yards per route run you know, monster, which mm-hmm. could be misleading in a small sample size. But I think he's more than just a little jitterbug type too. I mean, I think he's a full tree route runner. And I think now's the time to get him. I mean, because he has been productive. I was shocked at the ADP. We talked about Wilson, mm-hmm. Marvin Mims, wide receiver, 33, oh, Matt, whoa, 33. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So he's one spot above Jerry Judy, which I'm, I I'm can understand board. that. Yeah, Judy. yeah. If you, if you yeah. want Mims over Judy, I, I won't question that. Let me name some of these other players who are below Marvin Mims in our latest ADP. Omari Cooper, Hollywood Brown. Jahan Dotson, that one's looking uh, pretty good right now, by the way. Uh, Tank Dell, another rookie. Deontay Johnson, Mike Evans, Jamison Williams, Quentin Johnston. Uh, I know you're not ready to give up on him yet. A couple of Packers here. (laughs) Yeah, a couple of Packers, Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs. So, uh, you know, you can argue some of those. I I think Mims over Dotson is kind of obvious at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, But some of those other players, I'm – I'm shocked like, are, are behind Marvin Mims in, in our ADP right now. Yeah. A couple that stood out were I'm much rather still have Amari Cooper and Deontay Johnson and maybe even Mike Evans. He may play three more years. I mean, like the guys that have been around the block to me are I'm not sure Mims is out of the woods of even being an NFL starter. You know, those guys are going to be productive at least for the next couple of years, even if you are a rebuild. Um, I, how about this question? Mims or downs? I want downs. I think I, I think I want downs as well, and and mm-hmm. downs is far far uh, yeah, down this yeah. list and and off that pace. So, Mims, another guy I, I mentioned, he's kind of kind of the poster boy of at least one corner of of fantasy Twitter who really wants to see him on the field. I want I want to see him on the field as well. I mean, as I said, he's he's shown some real promise and some upside, and uh, we we liked him entering the league and kind of going through this process. Uh, but he's he's already being valued like he's a starter. I mean, we've seen we've seen Tank Dell earn the, a starting job in Houston and produce fantasy starter numbers, uh, right. and he's he's seven or eight spots below uh, below Mims on this list. So I, I like the idea of having Mims on my roster. But if if this re- represents his 
uh, his actual cost as far as uh, what it might take to trade for him. It's probably, probably not happening. I mean, I assume you're with me. If I can do Mims in a third for a first buy, you know, or anything yes. like that. Yeah. Anything close yeah, to I, that. I, I would want a first over Mims. Certainly. Matt, we have one more guy I want to ask you about. I think this is one of your, another one of your favorites. If I remember correctly, we'll have that conversation next. Guys, snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is unbelievably easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So I've also told you guys about Jace Medical, and we often go to this YMCA camp that's in the middle of nowhere, and frankly, hospitals and medicine are not readily available, and the Jace case is perfect for that. And frankly, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world today, and it's important to be prepared. I mean, Hurricanes and tornadoes in Florida, earthquakes, you know, fires in Hawaii, all these tragic things that you have to be prepared for, though. And the Jace case is a personalized emergency medication kit that has five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your case and add additional life-saving medications based on your unique needs. Um they, Jace is continually working to expand their medication offerings. In those recent efforts, they've added Invermedicine as an option in the Jace case. That's new as well. You can also get gift cards for your family or loved ones. You know, Christmas isn't that far away, so they get a Jace case of their own. It's really good stuff. So go to jacemedical.com and enter code Locked On at checkout for 20 bucks off your discount your first order. That's promo code locked on at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Matt, we have time for one more rookie conversation. I wanted to ask you about Jalen Hyatt. Now, of the guys we've talked about today, Hyatt has probably shown the least on the field. Uh, his, his best fantasy finish was wide receiver 50. That was back in week two when he totaled 89 yards. I believe he had one uh, long reception there that got him up to 89 for the game. But we are starting to see kind of that, that Giants lineup solidify a little bit with Hyatt, with Darius Slayton, and with my guy Wandell Robinson as kind of the three. And uh, guys like Hodgins and, and Paris Campbell are starting to lose snaps and and certainly lose targets. So uh, while we haven't seen much of Hyatt yet, as far as uh, from a fantasy standpoint, I could see this guy really breaking out over the next few weeks. I mostly agree. I mean, I got to think the pass protection in New York gets better. And I bring that up because he's a... Oh, that's fair long developing route guy. He's the downfield threat. He's very explosive, but he has shown up more and more. And I thought you laid it out really well that I think it's now pretty obvious that he is amongst the top three. And we know who those are, you know, the Hodgins of the world are gone. I don't love Daniel Jones, but I do think getting Andrew Thomas back in the rookie center and things like mm -hmm. that, that this might be a buy low opportunity for this offense as a whole. You know, including Wando Robinson, your guy. Yeah, I'm 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 always ready to to get uh Wando Robinson on my team. Hi at wide receiver <laughs> 64, uh in the same range as the guys we we've, we've been talking about, really a little bit further down the list than uh than downs, which I think is understandable right now. Um above Rondell Moore, above Kadarius Tony, who it looks like we're maybe giving up on finally. Um so I, I could see Hyatt moving up this list a little bit and, and gaining value. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's crazy. I mean, he's certainly a big play guy. 
and he's going to play a lot and he's talented. So, yeah, I mean, I'd like Downs better, but uh, the other ones I think are in the neighborhood. So we've talked Michael Mayer, Josh Downs, Michael Wilson, Marvin Mims, and Jalen Hyatt. We like all of those guys to continue to perform and potentially break out. Certainly like Josh Downs, the best of this group, uh, along with Marvin Mims. Mims, Michael Wilson, maybe a little too expensive right now uh, based on what we've seen on the field. We'd love Downs as a player to go out and target in trades right now. That is going to do it for today's show. Please make sure you download and subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Remember to follow the show at Locked On Dynasty. Follow Matt at Williamson NFL, and I'm Ryan, MC23. We'll be back next time with more Locked On Dynasty.